This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, in this video we are filling a page in my sketchbook with cozy little flower bunnies and hairs. I love drawing um, like rabbits and hairs and bunnies, all those little guys. And I'm actually going to be using a palette that I made myself in a pottery studio, a friend's pottery studio. Um, they glazed it for us, but I like kind of sculpted the, the palette itself and it was a lot of fun to do. And it's a pretty nice palette, honestly. The trays like don't bubble too much because sometimes if you get like a fresh plastic palette and you put water on it, it will like bead. And that's not really what you want for mixing, but this palette didn't do that. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it and it's just really cool to have a palette that I like sculpted myself It was great to have that opportunity to do that and for this painting Slash sketchbook page. I'm actually using some gouache and not to watercolor and uh, I was gonna say not markers, but I do use markers But I was really craving using my gouache again And I thought hey, this is a perfect time to break out the palette that I made because I haven't used it yet and I've been really wanting to. So I got out my gouache and I thought I would kind of use it as watercolor because you can you can thin down gouache and sort of build it up like watercolor, but of course it's way more opaque than watercolor, so you gotta keep that in mind. I also wanted to talk a bit about my mixed media approach for sketchbook pages. I rarely use one supply in an entire sketchbook page. I like to mix it up and grab whatever supplies I kind of feel like using in the moment because it sort of makes the whole process a little more fun. So for this page, I wanted to do the sketches with pencil. Um, I like to sketch with pencil because you can erase it very easily, but I prefer the look of sketching with a, with a more like colored lead, like the Terracotta Prismacolor color erase pencils. I like sketching with those the best, but well, I don't like sketching with those the best, but I like the way they look the best because the brown sort of blends in with the colors more. And uh, I find when I use pencil, it, everything looks a little bit more muted or dull because of the gray. It just naturally sort of has that effect because the graphite will bleed into the watercolor or whatever media you end up actually using on the page but I just like sketching with pencil because I find it easier, so it's sort of a, a dilemma I have, but I used graphite and then I put a layer of thin gouache, and as you will see soon, I actually used some water-based markers on top of the gouache, and this probably can sort of damage the marker tips, but they're pretty cheap markers, and I just like to use supplies however I see fit and I think putting markers on top of watercolor gives a really nice effect because they sort of blend together nicely and the markers can be a good way to add sharp details or like a specific color you want. Um, so I really liked doing that, but you'll see that. The water-based markers I use are the Ohuhu double-ended markers. They have a brush tip and a fine point end and um, I really like this specific dark green that I have. I think it's a really nice color. And what I'm drawing actually ended up being this month's Patreon sketchbook print. Every month on Patreon, I'll make an art print, a sticker, and a print of some sketches from my sketchbook from that month. It's sort of like a collectible sketchbook page. You like slowly build up prints from my sketchbook. So it's kind of like you have a sketchbook of mine, but in print form. But not every page becomes a sketchbook print. I sort of compile them into a nice appealing spread. So this is for February. If you're interested, you can grab that on my Patreon. You have until the end of the month. And the sticker was a lot of fun to make because I tried a new technique where I made it myself and I laminated it. So it's waterproof and shiny and really nice. When I went to get the gouache on my palette, as you might've seen at the beginning, um, a lot of it is still dried out because it's been dried out for a while some of the colors have been but i think some colors that weren't dried out before are now dried out and i think i made a video about this in the past and i got a lot of good advice on how to prevent that from happening i think what you're supposed to do first of all make sure you screw the caps on nice and tight maybe clean the paint off the outside so that the cap can sit on the bottle 
nicely and have a good seal. But a lot of people actually put their gouache in like like airtight containers to prevent any like airflow that can dry out the paint. So I actually went to a local art store and I picked up the primary set of gouache of my favorite, the like Holbein artist gouache. I got primary magenta cyan and I got yellow and I put them in a plastic bag and then I put the plastic bag in a like Tupperware container. So I really hope that works because um, the last time I tried to re-wet my gouache, I put them in little cups, but those were not airtight and now those are completely dried out. And I feel like just like the more I do it, the like the like worse the paint is sort of like it, it must be losing some kind of like agent in the paint every time it dries out. I don't know if it's just water that it loses. Like I know that you can get like um the binding agent that they use in gouache and mix that back into it. And that might be nice, but I'm just not really sure like what gets lost when it dries out. Is it purely moisture or does like other do other chemicals evaporate into the air? I'm not sure what the science is on that. And if like reactivating it with water is just like watering down the pigment when other things also got lost, I'm not really sure how that works. Um, but it's definitely not the same when you re-wet it than when you uh, squeeze it fresh out of the tube. So I really want to protect my gouache more so I don't keep like wasting it. Um, I'm still gonna try to use up the dried out stuff, but honestly, it's pretty hard to do that when it just repeatedly dries out over and over. But just like spraying it with water on your palette can be enough to sort of bring it back to life. And um, I I like to leave gouache on the palette and reuse it anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But if I want like a certain color and I want it to be like, if, if I need a certain color to be still like wet, um, sometimes I'll go and squeeze out a little bit more so that it's easier to work with. But I couldn't do that because all of them were dried out. All of my primaries were completely dried out, except for a blue that I had, but it's not really my like cyan color that I like a lot. So yeah, I picked up some more primaries. So now I have some fresh gouache and I'm still gonna try to make use of my old gouache. Maybe for like sketchbooks, I'll use the dried out stuff. And if I do final paintings, I'll use the wet stuff. But once the wet stuff dries out on the palette, I use it anyway, so. I don't know, that's just what I've been doing with gouache lately. I haven't used it in a long time, so I thought it was time to finally use it again because I really like gouache and I think it's really nice. Now for a quick break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. As you might know, Squarespace is the online platform where you can build your own website or shop or blog. It can be whatever you want it to be. I use my Squarespace website for my online portfolio. Because of their portfolios and galleries feature, it's really easy to display your artwork on Squarespace websites. You basically just upload your artwork, you drag and drop them in the order that you want them to display. Another great thing about their image tools is they have automatic image scaling. So image blocks automatically scale or fit images to make sure they always look right on the page. Squarespace also makes it really easy to connect your social media accounts to your website. I like to link mine to Instagram and YouTube because those are the other two social media sites I actually use. If this is interesting to you, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash gelarts and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and let's go on to the rest of the video. Um, I also had a lot of fun with markers on this. I really like these water-based markers. I, I feel like I talk about them in every video. They're just so easy to sketch with. I just love dropping color down with them. Um, they have like a huge range of colors and this is not sponsored by Ohuhu or anything, but I just, I just really like them and I highly recommend them for casual sketching because they don't bleed through and you can just easily lay colors down. It's a, it's really fun to use them. The idea behind this page, I think I was basing it off of a print that I did. It was for the Patreon. I kind of like to make everything sort of match each other because I think it's just nice to have like a cohesive Patreon package. So this page, I asked them, what would you like to see? I gave them some options and cozy flower bunnies was one of them. So that's why I did a print of like two hairs with a, uh, like one of them had like a flower crown and one of them had a little sweater. I think it's really fun to like ask you guys what you want to see me draw. Like if I ever am trying to think of it, I, I feel like it's a good idea to like ask people for advice. Like sometimes I'll do polls on Instagram or I'll be like, or I'll post a story with one of those like ask me a question thing and be like, what should this animal be wearing? And then I look through all the suggestions and I'll like 
draw some of them and post it with the response. I think it's fun to have that like interaction. So um, that's why I did this spread and I had a lot of fun with the flowers actually. I find flowers really hard to draw. They kind of seem like one of those things that everyone draws, but they're actually really difficult to draw because of the petals. They have such a complex shape of like a bunch of like overlapping shapes and like each petal is at a different angle and perspective and it's really hard to simplify certain flowers. Um, but sometimes I get in sort of like a flower drawing groove where I can sort of draw them the way that I envision them and I think I found a good balance with these like roses or whatever these flowers are. They're not really based on a particular plant. Um, they're sort of like, I don't even remember if I was looking at a photo or not, but I feel like these are from my head, my library of flowers in my mind. And I had a lot of fun drawing their petals and just like using these like fine tip markers and trying to like focus on the details and draw a little bit more slowly because I think I draw too fast sometimes. I think I'm a really quick drawer. <laughs> I'm a re I, I sketch really quickly and sometimes slowing down is a little bit difficult, but when I do, I can get some more accurate details. I think the reason why I draw like too fast or the reason why I draw quickly is because I don't like to make things stiff. And I know that if I draw too slowly, it will be stiff. So I kind of have the habit of like trying to be confident with my line and my with my lines and my mark making and sketches because it really helps with stiffness and it just helps keep everything loose because if you have like a really stiff drawing it's gonna look less appealing than like a loose flowy like and by by loose i don't mean messy i just mean like it has energy to it and movement and it's not just like a stiff drawing and i, I do think i draw a lot of stiff things honestly because a lot of the animals i draw are just kind of standing there but um yeah it would be nice to draw some more dynamic poses but in terms of just like sketching in general, not like the poses, I do like to draw a little bit quicker because if I slow down, things can get stiff. But slowing down every once in a while is really good for capturing those specific details in certain shapes because sometimes I just go too fast and I do it too quickly and it looks flat because I did it too quickly. The sketchbook page was a lot of fun to do. I really liked using all the different media and the palette that I made I really hope you enjoyed seeing it, and if you drew anything while watching this video or did anything, let me know what you were drawing or what you were doing, and let me know which sketch on the page is your favorite. I think I kind of like the flowers or like the bunny on the left, although I'm not really sure, but I do like the way I drew some of the leaves and the foliage, but some of them could be a bit better, I think. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. <music>